Hey guys, welcome back. Today, I'm going to be having a look at the performance gap in between a GTX 1060 and an R9 290 using the use of a couple benchmarks. I'm going to be using Unigent Valley, 3D Mark Firestrike, and then 3D Mark Time Spy to test out the DirectX 12 uh, capabilities of each card. So let's get right into it with the first benchmark. Alright, so I've run the first benchmark, Unigen Valley. Uh, the 1060, as we can see, came out with an overall average FPS of 61.9, <coughs> score of 2591, min FPS of 15.2, and a max of 129. So now, if we have a look at the uh, result for an R929, now this is the Sapphire uh, Tri-X R929, so it's slightly overclocked from factory, and the 1060 is a gigabyte slightly overclocked version as well. Now the R9290 got a score of 2493, uh, average FPS of 59.6, minimum 28.1, maximum 111.1. So as you can see there's not that much of a difference, about a hundred, just under 100 points <coughs> between the two. Um, however, I went ahead and overclocked the R9290 a little bit as well, and note this is without any voltage adjustments as well. Um, and I managed to get the score up to 2655. Max FPS 123.7 and minimum 29.6 with an average of 63.5. Uh, so just with a little bit of overclocking without even adjusting the voltage I was able to get the R9290 uh, above the 1060. So in this benchmark it seems that they're about the same uh, but we'll see what happens when we compare them in uh, Firestrike. Alright, so we finished the, the Fire Strike benchmark now. As you can see, the GDX 1060s got a score of 9,268 overall. Bear in mind, these systems have two different CPUs, so we'll only be really looking at the graphics score. Uh, the, the 1060 got a score of 11,996, whereas on the R9 290 system, uh, it got an overall of 9,907 but the graphics was slightly low at 11,792. Now the reason for the big difference in the overall score, the 1060 was run on an i5-4570, whereas the R9-290 was actually run on an i7-3770. So pretty much the extra performance from that CPU contributed to the overall score. Um, but as you can see from the graphics score, uh, both graphics cards were really, really close. The R9-290 was actually stock in this one, I didn't overclock it. So as you can see, the R9290 unoverclocked came extremely close to the 1060. It's within 100, 200 points. If I had to overclock the R9290 and run it on this as well, we could probably close that gap. But anyway, we've looked at that. Now let's look at our final test, uh, three mark times by. So the Time Spire test has finished. As we can see, the 1060 got an overall score of 3,651, whereas the R9290 at stock uh, clocks got 3,656. So really, really close. Uh, the actual graphics score themselves, once again, as we've seen in previous ones, the 3D, the uh, sorry, the 1060 is about 150 to 200 points ahead again in graphics score. Probably the only reason that my time that uh, the R9 to 90s times by score was higher is because of its CPU once again. But just looking at the graphics scores, uh, the FPS figures are again really close, within two FPS of each other, um, and the graphics scores as well. So the 1060 and the R9 to 90 are very very similar in terms of their graphical, uh, their graphics performance and capabilities. So as I did say before, um, I actually overclocked the R9 290. I don't have the Fire Strike and Time Spy benchmarks um, from when I had the R9 290 overclocked, but you can probably expect it to be about the same, like we did, like we saw with the Unigen Valley, um, for it to equal out. Um, so as I was discussing the pricing before as well, 
Uh, the 1060 you can get from anywhere to 300 to 400 dollars, and the R9 290 anywhere from 150 to 250. Now, bear in mind this isn't the R9 290X, which probably would even out with the 1060, <coughs> but with this overclock, which is considered a very light overclock, seeing as I didn't actually adjust the voltage um, at all. Only things I adjusted were the core clock and the memory. Um, that's pretty good results. Obviously, not every card is going to be able to overclock the same, especially not the stock AMD cards at the stock cooler. They will definitely throttle because they're terrible coolers. But this one being the Sapphire Triax, it has a three fan design which keeps it pretty cool um, under load. So, yeah, I can definitely recommend either of these cards. Run pretty much any game you wanted to at medium to high settings um, at 1080p and even and or 4K. Um, in the future, I can maybe do some 4K benchmarks, but that just depends um, on obviously getting a 4K screen or something to show it on um, as well. But anyway guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.